Shalom, shalom, everyone. Well, tonight we're going to be studying in the book of Revelation. That's uh, in Hebrew, Chazon. And uh, would you like to have solid proof of whether or not the rapture occurs before the Great Tribulation? Well, I have got proof for you tonight. So stick with me. And that's what we'll talk about during our study tonight. Welcome back, and we'll begin our study in chapter 4. We'll be talking at first about the throne. If you hear uh, children in my background, it's because there are children in my background. So, <laughs> but that doesn't matter. Yah loves it because of such is the kingdom of the Shamaim, the kingdom of Yah. Praise Yah. After this, I looked up, uh, I looked and saw a door having been opened in the Shamayah, and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me, saying, Come up here, and I will show you what has to take place after this. What does it mean, voice like a trumpet? It's simple, really. A trumpet has... Uh, very distinct sound and is very clear. The voice, no doubt, had many tones. And uh, as he spoke, you know, the, the words were clear and precise. I can just imagine, you know, the when I heard the voice of Yah when I was young, um, it was very plain. There was no misunderstanding what he said. Sometimes somebody can say something, you don't hear it well. But when Yah speaks, it's like the voice of a trumpet. It's very clear, and you know what's being said. And immediately, I came to be in the Spirit. He wasn't in the flesh anymore. He's in the Spirit. And saw a throne set in the Shamayah, and one sat on the throne. And he who sat there was like a jasper and a ruby stone in appearance. And there was a rainbow around the throne, like an emerald in appearance. Uh, understand that the writer here, Yochanan, John, uh, is trying to explain things in a multidimensional place because the Shamayim is multidimensional. But we live in a single dimension here on this earth. As, and it's hard to explain sometimes what you can see in the spirit and multi dimensions by using English words. Sometimes there's just not a good explanation, but he does the best that he can. 
uh, with the words that he has. Now, jasper is reddish and opaque. A ruby is red and translucent. So is the one on the throne reddish and semi-translucent? Perhaps. Maybe that's what he was meaning. Emeralds are green and translucent. Rainbows are the full color spectrum. Maybe the full color spectrum of the rainbow was seen through an emerald colored filter, or better yet, it was a, a green bow of brightness surrounding the throne. Maybe it was like a rainbow. That's what it looked like, but it's just an emanation uh, of light from the throne and it causes some prism effect. And they see he sees the emerald green. And around the throne were 24 thrones. And on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting dressed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. There have been many scholars suggest that these uh, men on the thrones were the men that uh, throughout history did Yahweh's perfect will. and But we don't know that. It doesn't say anywhere in the scriptures, as far as I have read, um, where these 24 elders come from. They say it may be the, uh, 12 of them may be the uh, patriarchs. And they may be. But why would you include the patriarchs and not include Abraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov as well? So I think that they're a combination of people. Perhaps Moshe is one of the elders. Perhaps Ezekiel is one of the elders. Perhaps Daniel is one of the elders. We don't really know. But whoever they will be deserves to be on the throne. And because Abba put them there. Let's talk about worship of the creation, uh, the creator in the next part. Chapter, verse 5. And out of the throne came lightnings and thunders and voices and seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of Elohim. And before the throne there was a sea of glass, like crystal, and in the midst of the throne and around the throne were four living creatures covered with eyes in front and in back. Now, I've seen artist depictions, and I don't really like them that much, of a beast with eyes all over it. Um, I don't think, I think these creatures were beautiful. I don't think that John was seeing eyes, real eyes, but he was seeing, he was seeing a creature. But there was a knowing and understanding in that, that they had eyes within and without, and they could see things, spiritual things, um, near as well as Yah himself. Um, that would be a spiritual sight that they have. So it wouldn't definitely, uh, wouldn't uh, absolutely have to be eyes that he saw on their physical body and spiritual body because they are spirit. Um, but they're like angels, uh, messengers. But anyway, um, everything that you here, all of the descriptions given in the book of Revelation, he's trying to explain things to a people who haven't seen what he has seen. And he's trying to explain it in such a way that they will understand. So let your imagination run a little wild. It's okay. Actually, it's it's fun. Um, but... Don't don't say that, well, they have eyes all over them. I don't think they do. I think they spiritually have eyes within and without. Okay. And the first living creature was like a lion, and the second living creature like a calf. And the third living creature had a face like a man, and the fourth living creature was like a flying eagle. 
and the four living creatures, each having six wings, I believe they did have six wings, were covered with eyes around and within. I don't think you would see that in the natural. And they do not cease day or night saying, Kodesh, 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 Yahweh El Shaddai, who was and who is and who is coming. And when the seven living creature when the eleven uh, living creatures give esteem and respect and thanks to him who sits on the throne, who lives forever and ever, the twenty four elders fall down before him who sits on the throne and bow before him who lives forever and ever. And they cast their crowns before the throne, saying, You are worthy, O Yahweh, to receive esteem, respect, and power, for you have created all, and because of you, of your desire, they are and were created. The scripture says something about Yeshua in this too. Remember? It says that Yeshua was in on creation. Everything that was made was made by him. Remember in the book of uh, John, in the beginning was the word and the word was with Yah and the word was Yah or Elohim. The word was Elohim. Same was in the beginning with Elohim. And all the things that were made were made by him, the word. And not anything that was made was made without him. So, we have to really realize that he and the Father are one. They are one in their actions, the things that they do. Powerful. Chapter 5. And I saw in the right hand of him who sat on the throne a scroll written inside and on the back, having been sealed with seven seals. And I saw a strong messenger proclaiming with a loud voice, who is worthy to open the scroll and to loose its seals? And no one in the heaven, show me I, or on the earth or under the earth was able to open the scroll or to look at it. Drum roll. Yeah, because, you know, John already began weeping. He said, I wept much because no one was found worthy to open and read the scroll or look at it. Why did Yochanan weep? I mean, about that. The lamb was not revealed to him at first. He saw the scroll. Uh, it had writing on both sides, so he knew that this was probably a legal document. He wept because there was no one able to righteously judge on behalf of the believers. This was what his life had been committed to. And one of the elders said to me, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of Dawid, overcame to open the scroll and to loosen its seven seals. Now, it says, Do not weep. See, the lion of the tribe of Yehuda, the root of Dawid, it says a lion, but when he appeared, he was a lamb. Okay. And I looked and saw in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders, a lamb standing as having been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of Elohim sent out into all the earth. How many of you when you read Revelation, uh, Chazon, for the first time, uh, that this lamb, Yochanan saw, was Yeshua. You knew it was Yeshua. Uh, he saw Yeshua and recognized him as the lamb. Now, why would a man look like a lamb? It, it, he don't. He doesn't. The reason he was seen that way is because Yochanan recognized in the multi-dimension area that he was that it was a lamb, that Yeshua was the lamb of Yah who gave his life and his blood so that we could live. 
and be in the company of our Father. So, um, do this lamb really have seven eyes? Spiritually, it did. Physically, I don't think you would have seen seven eyes. You would have seen two eyes because it was a lamb. Or maybe you would have seen a lamb and knew it was a lamb, but it looked like Yeshua. You know, and, uh, we, had to, we had to know that there's a difference in what he saw and what he can explain to us. Okay, there is the sevenfold spirit of Yah that goes out into all the world. Why seven horns? Because seven messengers were sent to rule over the seven assemblies. Whether or not they were celestial beings or human, I don't know. We don't know. We can't prove either way. Why the seven eyes? It was not physically seven eyes, but seven spiritual eyes, revealing great discernment of the Ruach HaKodesh. We must understand that we are listening to the Ruach now and not to human understanding or sight. Uh, what Yochanan was seeing was multidimensional, like I said, not single as we see on earth. I've seen many artist depictions of the four living creatures, and uh, they are trying to draw eyes all over their bodies, covering them <laughs> inside and out. Every depiction that I saw was somewhat revolting, um, wasn't it to you? I mean, honestly, you see that and you say, yeah. I don't think that Yahweh created it like that. I think that he made it quite beautiful. I believe the four living creatures are extremely beautiful and marvelous creatures. I'm telling you this because I want you to discern, to discern in the Ruach what the truth is about what Yochanan saw and how he was trying to explain it in the book of Chazon. Now, if this is truly a lamb, a lamb has no hands, only feet. How could he take the scroll from Yah's hand in this next verse if he was actually a lamb? He couldn't, unless he was grab it with his mouth and chew the seals off. Uh, I don't think so. And he came, the lamb, and took the scroll out of the right hand of him sitting on the throne. And when he took the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of the Kodesh ones, you and I. And they sang a renewed song, saying, You are worthy to take the scroll and to open its seals because you were slain and have redeemed us to Elohim by your blood out of every tribe and tongue and people and nations, and made us sovereigns and priests to our Elohim, and we shall reign upon the earth. Who are these that sang a renewed song? It's the ones who were redeemed, redeemed, by Yeshua. It's the bride. It's us. <laughs> it's the Kodesh of Yahweh, which were already with Yeshua before the beginning of the sounding of the seven trumpets. So it's impossible that we will go through the wrath of Yah in the great tribulation uh, because we are already there. We just have it proved to us that we're already there with him before the seven seals of the scroll are broken. And the great tribulation is just fixing to begin. So that is proof positive that we will be with him at the beginning of the great tribulation. He is coming back before the great tribulation, but here's what I need to tell you. He's coming for the wise ones that are ready with their lamps trimmed, 
and they're all ready to meet the bridegroom. Many believe that he is coming, but are still living in sin, not living Kodesh. We must be watching and waiting, praying for his return. Many will be caught sleeping and not be ready. Guess what? They will be left behind. They will have to endure the great tribulation for the rest of their life on earth. They may be killed, probably will be killed, for refusing to take the mark of the beast. If they take the mark, they will be condemned. Let's get back to the scripture, verse 11. And I looked and heard the voice of many messengers around the throne, and the living creatures, and the elders, and the number of them was myriads of myriads, and thousands of thousands. A myriad is an indefinite number. Uh, it's innumerable. Cannot be counted. Thousands of thousands is billions. Right now, the earth is populated with over 8 billion people. I think 8.1 billion to be exact. Well, that's not exact. That's an estimate too. One, 8 billion people right now. And some estimate that the total population of earth from the beginning until now is over 100 billion people. So, and the number of them was myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb, having been slain, to receive power and riches and wisdom and strength and respect and esteem and blessing. That's a lot. And every creature which is in the Shamayah and on the earth and under the earth and such as are in the sea and all them that and all that are in them, I heard saying to him sitting on the throne and to the Lamb, be the blessing and the respect and the esteem and the might forever and ever. And the four living creatures says, Amen. And the 24 elders fell down and bowed before him who lives forever and ever. Are you seeing this in your mind and in your heart? Are you seeing it also in your spirit? That's where you really need to see it. Chapter 6, the first seal. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, do you think he opened it with his hands or do you think he opened it with his feet? It's the Lamb. It's Yeshua. <laughs> and I heard one of the four living creatures saying, like a sound of thunder, come and see. And I looked and saw a white horse and who, who sat on it holding a bow and a crown was given to him and he went out overcoming and to overcome. The second seal. And when he opened the second seal, I heard the second living creature saying, come and see. And another horse, fiery red, went out, and it was given to the one who sat on it to take peace from the earth, and that they, mankind, should slay one another. And a great sword was given to him. Now we get to the third seal. And when he opened the third seal, I heard the third living creature say, Come and see. And I looked and saw a black horse, and he who sat on it, holding a pair of scales in his hand. And I heard a voice in the midst of the four living creatures saying, A quart of wheat for a day's wage, and three quarts of barley for a day's wage, and do not harm the oil and the wine. Now we reach the fourth seal. And when he opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth living creature saying, Come and see. 
and I looked and saw a pale horse, and he who sat on it had the name Death, and the grave followed with him, and authority was given to them over a fourth of the earth to kill with the sword, and with hunger, and with death, and by the beasts of the earth. This had one rider, and death was the rider, but it says Hades, um, oh, the grave followed with him. So we reached the fifth seal. And when he opened the fifth seal, I saw under the altar the beings of those having been slain for the word of Elohim and for the witness which they held. And this is not only in the uh, in the great... Uh, tribulation, but this is all through time. People who have been slain for the witness of Yahuwah, which they held. And they cried with a loud voice, saying, How long, O Master, set apart and true, until you judge and avenge our blood on those who dwell on the earth? And there was given to each one a white robe, and they were told, that they should rest a little while longer until the number of their fellow servants and their brothers who would be killed as they were was completed. We know that uh, there are many that turned to Messiah, Yeshua, during the Great Tribulation. And many of them will be killed because of their refusal to take the mark of the beast. They'll be executed head chopped off, just like that. The sixth seal. And I looked when he opened the sixth seal and saw a great earthquake came to be. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood, and the stars of the Shamayah fell to the earth as a fig tree dropped its unripe figs being shaken by a strong wind. I imagine you can imagine that as well as I can. And the heaven departed like a scroll being rolled up, and every mountain and island was moved out of its place. It didn't say it disappeared, but it moved out of its place. And the sovereigns of the earth, and the great ones, and the rich ones, and the commanders, and the mighty, and every slave, and every free one, hid themselves in the caves and in the rocks of the mountains, and they and said to the mountains and rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him sitting on the throne and from the wrath of the Lamb. The wrath that he promised us that he would save us from. Because the great day of his wrath has come, and who is able to stand? Chapter 7, the 144,000, the first question raised when the 144,000 are mentioned is, who are they? Followed closely by the question, where did they come from? The answer to the first question is simple. They are 144,000 who will be evangelists on the earth during the Great Tribulation. That was easy. The second question is also easy. Where did they come from? They came from the 12 tribes of Israel. 12,000 from each tribe times 12. That means 144,000. Now that we have established who they are and where they came from, whoops, who they are and where they came from, we are flooded with a plethora of, of questions regarding the details, such as, are they all Hebrew, or do they include the Gentiles who were grafted into Israel? That was a common occurrence in history, beginning with the exodus from Mitzrayim, Egypt. Uh, many of the people that accompanied Israel in the exodus were the people of Mitzrayim who loved the Israelites. Okay, who loved the Israelites and wanted to join them. Yah allowed it after certain laws were adhered to. 
He let them join and become a part of Yisrael. And they were Mitzrayim, Egyptians. How about today? I have been grafted in by accepting Yeshua as my Savior. Would I be considered Hebrew because of that? Here's the scripture that says I would be considered a Hebrew. In the book of Romeim, chapter 11, verse 19, says, You shall say then, the branches were broken off that I might be grafted in. Good. By belief, they were broken off, and you stand by belief. Do not be arrogant, but fear. For if Elohim did not spare the natural branches, he might not spare you either. <laughs> and we see in uh, Romeo chapter 2, verse 28, For he is not a Yehudite. This is just an error in the scriptures. Uh, it's not supposed to be a Yehudite. It's supposed to be a Hebrew. For he is not a Hebrew who is so outwardly. Neither is circumcision that which is outward in the flesh. But a Yehudite, a Hebrew, is he who is so inwardly. And circumcision is that of the heart, in spirit, not literally, whose praise is not from men, but from Elohim. I perceive that I am Hebrew, because I am Hebrew in my heart. So, let's continue now in chapter 7. Beginning at verse 1, we haven't started chapter 7 yet. I just wanted to make this clear before we started. And after this, I saw four messengers standing at the four corners of the earth, holding the four winds of the earth, that the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Um, when I read this, uh, when I listened to this, when Alan was talking about uh, this chapter in Revelation, he said, now that doesn't mean that it's a square earth or it's a flat earth. <laughs> I think it was Alan that said that. Uh, if, if not, it was somebody else that I watched in, a, in the same time area, time frame. Okay, and I saw another messenger coming up from the rising of the sun, holding the seal of the living Elohim, and he cried with a loud voice to the four messengers to whom it was given to harm the earth and the sea, saying, Do not harm the earth, nor the sea, nor the trees, until we have sealed the servants of our Elohim upon their foreheads. And I heard the number of those who were sealed, 144,000, sealed out of all the tribes of the children of Israel. Of the tribe of Yehuda, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Reuven, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of God, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Asher, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Naphtali, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Menasheh, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Shimon, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Lewi, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Yishachar, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Zebulun, 12,000 were sealed. Of the tribe of Yosef, 12,000 were sealed. And of the tribe of Benjamin, 12,000 were sealed. So, <laughs> what tribe could I possibly be listed in? <laughs> I don't know. Am I qualified to be a part of the 144,000? Now, some would say no because you're married. And the, the scripture tells us that the 144,000 will be virgins not defiled by a woman. But scripture also te tells us that marriage is pleasing to Yah. And he who finds a wife finds a good thing. 
I'm considering that this means a spiritual virginity, meaning that person is spiritually pure because they are devoted to Messiah and they do not and they are not committing spiritual whoredom. Okay, praise from the great multitude. I like this part too. After this, I looked and saw a great crowd which no one was able to count out of all nations and tribes and peoples and tongues standing before the throne and before the Lamb dressed in white robes and palm branches in their hands. Who is that? It's us. <laughs> and crying out with a loud voice saying, Deliverance belongs to our Elohim who sits on the throne and to the Lamb. And all the messengers stood around the throne and the elders and the four living creatures and fell on their faces before the throne and worshipped Elohim, saying, Amen, the blessing and the esteem and the wisdom and the thanksgiving and the respect and the power and the might to our Elohim forever and ever. Amen. Can anybody there say amen with me <laughs> amen and one of the elders responded to me saying who are those dressed in white robes and where did they come from i think he was pointing to a particular uh a crowd there it wasn't everybody he was pointing to i think that we just don't get the understanding here and i said to him master you know and he said to me Okay, and he said to me, these are those coming out of the great distress, the great tribulation, having washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. These were ones that were killed in the great tribulation because until they're killed, they can't come up to the Shamaim. Because of this, they are before the throne of Elohim and serve him day and night in his dwelling place. And he who sits on the throne shall spread his tent over them. They shall never hunt, they shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more. Neither shall the sun strike them or any heat. Because the lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them and lead them to fountains of waters of life and Elohim shall wipe away every tear from their eyes. Now, a lot of this is said symbolically, like the shepherd shall shepherd them, the lamb who is in the midst of the throne shall shepherd them uh, to fountains of waters of life. Well, they're, they're in the Shamaim, and we've got the river of Chai, and they can drink from that, and they will. And But... It's just that the peace that they have comes because of Yeshua and what he did as a shepherd to them and for them. And not for them only. You could include all of the rest of the, those that believed and were there in the Shamaim uh, with the Lamb as he's opening the seals. <laughs> Can you see that? Can everybody see that? The Lamb is there in the, in the Shamaim opening the seals in front of the believers, the bride that he has already come back for. I don't know why I never saw that in my life before, but here recently, just recently, Yah's just been opening things up for me and I am, I want to say I am so thankful to Yah for doing that, for helping me. Because all I want to know is the truth. That's all I want to share is the truth. And if I share anything less than the truth, you guys uh, rebuke me and tell me, Hey, Brother Ken, this is not true. Here we go with the proof from the scriptures. You know, uh, I don't mean be nasty to me or, or uh, anything like that, but Love me and tell me if I make a mistake, if I make an error. Tell me so that I can understand, so I can, I can study and show myself approved unto Yah, a workman that doesn't need to be ashamed, 
rightly dividing the word of truth. We're all subject to error. I've been subject to it once or twice. <laughs> oh, but anyway, well, I appreciate your time tonight, uh, each and every one of you. I'm thankful for for all that. Um, I don't want to just keep that. I want to discard that. <laughs> it was asking me if I wanted to keep the changes I made. The changes I made were errors when I clicked on words. <laughs> and so I don't want to keep those changes. Anyway, um, I love each and every one of you. I'm thankful for you coming here and being with us tonight during this study. And uh, I pray that God's blessings be upon each and every one of you. And that he comforts you with his Ruach HaKodesh as you pitch your tent with him and he pitches his tent with you. Him and Yeshua. That's what Yeshua said. My father and I will come and pitch our tent with him <laughs> and make our abode with him. And that's what, uh, that's what I'm doing right now. My abode is here with Yah. And Yeshua, my Savior. And that's why I never get lonely. <laughs> I've got them here with me all the time. Well, praise y'all for everything. And we're going to end the same way, so... I sing to Yahuwah, for He is highly exalted. The horse and its rider He has thrown into the sea. Yah is my strength and song, and He has become my deliverance. He is my El, and I praise Him. Elohim of my Father And I exalt Him Yahuwah is a man of battle Yahuwah is His name He has cast Pharaoh's chariots And his army into the sea and his chosen officers are drowned in the sea of reeds. The depths covered them. They went down to the bottom like a stone. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has become great in power. Your right hand, O oh Yahuwah, has crushed the enemy. And in the greatness of your excellence, you pulled down those who rose up against you. You sent forth your wrath. It consumed them like stubble. And with the wind of your nostrils, the waters were heaped up The floods stood like a wall The depths became stiff In the heart of the sea The enemy said, I pursue, I overtake I divide the spoil My being is satisfied on them I draw out my sword, my hand destroys them you blew with your wind the sea covered them they sank like lead in the mighty waters who is like you oh Yahuwah among the mighty ones who is like you great Awesome in praises, working wonders You stretched out your right hand, the earth swallowed them In your kindness, you led the people whom you have redeemed In your strength, you
you guided them to your Kodesh dwelling. Peoples heard, they trembled. Anguish gripped the inhabitants of Pelasheth. Then the chiefs of Edom were troubled, the mighty men of Moab. Trembling grips them all the inhabitants of Canaan melted. Fear and dread fell on them by the greatness of your arm. They are as silent as a stone. Until your people pass over, O oh, Yahuwah. Until the people whom you have bought pass over. You bring them in and plant them in the mountain of your inheritance, in the place, O oh, Yahuwah, which you have made for your own dwelling, the meek dash, O oh, Yahuwah which your hands have prepared. Yahweh reigns forever and ever.